You're really curious to try those short circular needles for knitting socks, but you're not quite sure about the whole process. We're tackling that in this video. We're gonna knit a pair of socks from cuff to toe using short circular needles. Hey Nerdy Knitter, Tanya here. I'm a certified knitting instructor and a master hand knitter, and the goal here at Nerdy Knitting is to help you become a more confident, adventurous knitter. Trying new techniques and methods like short circular needles can certainly build that confidence. So these are nine inch circulars, and that's what we're gonna use to knit a pair of socks in this tutorial. And you'll find the link for the pattern for these socks down below the video. Comes in a variety of sizes from very small to very large adult size and it features a two by two rib along the leg and along the top of the instep. And we've got our heel here. This looks like a short row heel, but it's actually a mock short row heel. There's no short rows involved. We just use increases and decreases to create this heel shape. And we also have a round toe down here. I've worked mine in contrasting colors, but you can use all one color for yours or just contrast for the heel or just the toe, whatever you wanna do, but you'll find that pattern linked down below. Let's go to the overhead and take a closer look at our materials and supplies and our sock and get started knitting socks on short circular needles. Let's take a quick look at the materials we're going to need. Of course, you're going to need some sock yarn. I'm using yarn from Alley Cat Yarns. This is her Leo BFL. It's a blue face Lester yarn, which is really great for knitting socks, but your favorite sock yarn will work just fine. You'll need about 100 grams skein, but of course that depends on how large your foot is or how long you want your sock to be. You'll need more yarn in that case, but 100 gram skein is a good ballpark figure. And if you wanna do contrast toes and heels, you're going to need a second color. A 20 gram skein or some leftovers should be plenty for that. And of course we're going to need our needles. And for this tutorial, we're using shorty needles, short circular nine inch needles to knit socks in the round. Now the size I'm using is a US one, that's 2.25 millimeters. If you have a size you prefer, you go right ahead and use those as long as you get a nice tight gauge, about eight stitches to the inch, nine stitches is really good too. I find that with the short circulars like this, I get a slightly tighter gauge than I do on something like a double point needles or for magic loop. Now, if you're brand new to this type of needles, you're gonna wanna skip knitting the sock first, just cast on enough stitches to get around the needle. About 60 stitches should be fine for moving them around easily. And then just start knitting until you've knit a few inches and you're finding that you're getting your groove with these needles because you can't hold them like you do your normal knitting needles. Since they're so short, you can only use like your first few fingers to hold them. You might find that you get a lot tighter, like you tense up and you're holding them very tightly and then you're gonna get pain in your forearms. Ask me how I know. The first time I used these, that's exactly what happened. You might find yourself just holding them very tightly. So try to relax as you knit and just find the way that it's easiest for you to hold these needles as you knit. Then once you've knit a few inches, you can go ahead and rip out that little swatch and start knitting along with me. And along with that short circular needle, you're also going to need double pointed needles or if you prefer magic loop or some other method just to finish the toe because like other knitting in the round on circular needles, you cannot do, when you have just a few stitches left, you can't do it on needles like this. So you need some other method to do that. I'm also going to use them to knit the heel because I just find it is a little bit easier than trying to do the heel back and forth in rows on these little needles. Of course, if you want to attempt that, go right ahead. There's no reason you can't do the heel on these needles as well. I just find it a little bit easier to use a few double pointed needles but you're definitely going to need them to knit your toe. So you want the same size as the needle you're using. We're also gonna need some stitch markers. You're going to need one for the beginning of round and then a few for working the heel. And then we're gonna need a handful of them for working the toe. So make sure you have plenty of stitch markers for all of that. Now, before we get started, let's just take a closer look at our sock construction. So you can see we're doing a two by two rib for the cuff and this part is completely adjustable. Knit the leg of the sock as long as you want. I just prefer socks that are on the shorter side. So this part, you're gonna, we're gonna cast on, we're gonna start two by two rib and then just work that as long as we want. And then we're gonna stop and work back and forth just on the stitches for our heel. Now this looks like a short row heel, but it is not a short row heel. This is a mock short row heel. We are going to be using decreases and then picking up stitches to make this heel. So no short rows involved. And of course I've done mine in a contrast color, 
but you don't have to do that. And then once that is finished, we go back to putting all of our stitches together on the short circular needle and then just knitting for the length of the foot. And I continue the rib pattern on the, on the instep and then stockinette on the bottom. And then we switch back to our contrast color to work our round toe. And for this toe, we are spacing our decreases every eight stitches and then decreasing to create this toe shape. And there's no kitchen or graft here. We'll just get down to write just a few stitches and then just bind them all off together like you would the top of a hat. So let's start with casting on. And I'm just going to be using the plain old long tail cast on. I'm not gonna demonstrate it for you. I'm assuming if you're here to use shorty needles, you've probably knit some socks before and this is just a new technique for you. But I will link down below to a video that demonstrates the long tail cast on. So you're just going to get your pattern and then choose the size that's appropriate for what you would like to knit and cast on that number of stitches. Cast them right onto your short circular needle. So once you cast on, it is just like you would knitting anything in the round. You're just going to make sure your stitches aren't twisted around the needle. You're going to make sure your working yarn is on the right needle. Join them together. And you can either use the tail to know where your beginning of round is or put a stitch marker there. That one's a little big. Let's go for a smaller one. And then you're just going to join in the round. Now I like to use the tail and the working yarn for the very first stitch. I just think it helps secure it and then I drop the tail. So push those stitches up, knit that first stitch. Now the only thing to know, pay attention to here is that first stitch now looks like it's two stitches because we used both strands together. Just make sure you knit them together when you come to them on the next round. And using that uh, tail, helps you close it up like you can use that to to really tighten that spot in case you're worried about having excess space right there so i'm just going to take the tail and move it this way out of my way and then we are going to just start in our pattern we are working in a knit two purl two rib so i've knit one i'm going to push my stitches up here on the needle knit another stitch and then purl two so for the actual method, it's very similar to working. I mean, it's exactly the same as knitting anything in the round on a circular needle. It's just that your stitches, well, not your stitches, your needles are very short. So, and I do, takes me a minute to get back into the rhythm. I'm not used to using these a lot. I've only used them for a few socks now, but enough to know how they work. So you're just going to maintain that knit two purl two or establish that knit two purl two pattern all around the sock on this first round. And then after that, you're just going to keep knitting in knit two purl two rib until your sock is as long as you want it to be. So this is, if you, if you practiced just doing stock and net stitch, just getting the knit stitch down, this might also be a little uncomfortable because now you're introducing that purl stitch as well. And that is also like the knit stitch going to take a little adjustment as you figure out how you need to hold the needles. Like you can tell I'm only just using my these three fingers. I'm not using the other two. I'm sort of like maybe holding the cord but that's it. It's mostly the first three fingers and it's very easy to want to pinch things very tightly. So I would suggest you don't do that. Try to maintain loose hold on these needles or you're going to have pain in your arms and in your forearms and in your hands from gripping them too tightly. But it just, it really just is a matter of practice. I can't say this is my favorite method for knitting socks. I don't mind double pointed needles. I don't mind magic loop. I don't really have a favorite method, but I do think I'm going to prefer this when it comes to knitting like something with stranded color work on socks. Cause I do not like stranded color work on magic loop or on double pointed needles, but I think I wouldn't mind it so much on these kind of needles. There are also kits of these needles or little, uh, circular sets that you can buy with different length needle tips. Some of them are a little bit longer. You can get, I think this is about two inches. You can get some that have three inch tips. And I think that additional inch would make them a little more comfortable. I'm not sure how they would work for knitting socks, but for other things like sleeves, they would probably be much 
easier to use with that just that extra inch on there. So I'm just going to continue knitting and then I'll do a few rows here and then come back and you can see how this is starting to look. I just finished my third round and yes it's starting to get a little easier once you get them in your hands and you start knitting a few rounds you'll start to find your rhythm and how it's easiest for you to hold and you can see we've got that knit two purl two rib is starting to develop so I'm just going to keep knitting I don't remember how many rounds I had my first sock I'll have to check my notes but you're just going to knit and knit two purl two rib until the length of the sock is as long as or the length of the leg is as long as you want it to be if you like a longer leg go for about six inches or so you're just going to keep knitting until this is as long as you want it to be that's really personal preference and then we'll come back and we'll start with our heel so once the cuff and the leg are as long as you want it's time to move on to the next step which is working our heel and we're going to do that in a contrast color but we have a bit of a setup to do first we want to center this rib stitch pattern over the instep. We don't want to start with a knit to and end with a purl to. We want that to be centered on the top. So we just have to move our beginning of round marker just a few stitches. One stitch for half the sizes and two stitches for the other half. So I'm just going to complete this final round here. And then all we need to do is remove our beginning of round marker. And in my case, I just have to knit one. In some of the socks you'll have to knit two and then we just replace that marker I'm gonna go with a different color this time so that one's going to be my beginning of round marker and I'll just knit one to hold it in place so now basically this first half this second half of my stitches from this knit one all the way over to another one over here I have 72 stitches so these 36 are going to be my instep stitches so for my size the instep will begin and end with a knit one across the instep stitches for the other half of the sizes it's going to be a knit two worked all the way over to another knit two and that will center your rib pattern along this top part of the leg because now we're going to work the heel and we're not going to be working any more rib there but it will just help center that pattern just a little bit so it just looks nicely finished so now that we have dealt with our instep stitches the next thing to do is start the heel but we're going to work one setup round to place a few markers so we're going to continue our rib pattern all the way around you're going to follow the pattern it's going to tell you where to place the markers so in my case I have to knit 12 stitches I've knit one already or work across I shouldn't say knit I'm going to work 12 stitches ten okay I've worked my first 12 I'm going to place my first marker I'm going to work 12 more in my case place another marker and then knit 12 more and that will be all of my heel stitches and then I'm going to place a second marker and this separates this half of the stitches my heel stitches from the other half which are the instep stitches so our working yarn is now over here we're just going to drop it and save it now if you're not doing a contrast heel you're just going to keep working back and forth just with this color I'm going to switch to a contrast color and on this side we have these markers placed this is our beginning of round this is our halfway point to separate our instep and our heel stitches and then these two markers separate our heel stitches into three groupings and check the pattern to see how many stitches you should have in each group it should be about an equal number in each depending on the number you might have more here you might have more here but it's about equally split it worked out very well for my 72 stitch sock I have 36 stitches in the heel so it's exactly 12 in each but your number might be slightly different as long as it's basically divided into thirds and that's what these two markers are for so at this point we're going to stop working the instep our color our main color is ready to start again when we come back to working it that's over here now 
and we are ready to introduce our contrast color. We're gonna work a wrong side row. We're gonna stop working there and we're gonna work back across this way. Now, if you wanted to, you can turn your work because we're not gonna be working on these stitches right here. And if you just wanna use the main color and continue your heel, you're perfectly welcome to do that. I'm gonna introduce a contrast color. So your first choice is just to use your circular needles. These, and you're gonna to have to switch them, of course, push this one up. But what we're gonna do is work back in this direction, working a wrong side row. I actually find it very difficult to use the short circulars to work the heel. So I'm going to switch and use double pointed needles at this point. So I'm just gonna take out this last stitch. There we go. So all of my instep stitches are here. Drop your working that main color unless you wanna just continue using that. I'm gonna introduce my contrast color and the wrong side rows for this first part of the heel are all the same. We're gonna knit one, purl to the last stitch in our heel and then knit one. So it can be a bit cumbersome at first. We've got this extra needle hanging out here. So I'll knit that first stitch and then Purl to the last stitch. And I'm gonna transfer all of these stitches to this double pointed needle, or all of the heel stitches. The instep stitches are just gonna hang out right on that circular needle. After we get these stitches transferred, you'll see how it will look. So I'm just gonna purl to my beginning of round marker. And on that final stitch, I'm just going to knit that last stitch right there. And that is all of my heel stitches. I can take this marker off because it's just gonna fall off anyway. Slide those stitches up onto the cord and they're just gonna hang out right there while we work our heel back and forth. So you can see this is what it looks like right now. The only two markers we have currently are the two that we need to work our heel. And our instep is just gonna hang out right there. We're not gonna do anything with those right now as we create this heel. So it is, it's just much easier to do this with separate needles. So you only need two double pointed needles. We're just gonna work back and forth on these rows. And that is what every wrong side row is going to look like. You're gonna knit the first stitch, purl across, knit the last stitch. And what you're forming is a little garter edge, just one stitch of garter stitch along the side. And we're gonna use that to pick up stitches for the second half of the heel. Now, you'll see this as it progresses, but I'm just gonna tell you now, if you find it difficult to pick up along a garter edge, then you can do like you would have with a heel flap and gusset. Instead of knitting the first and the last stitch, you could slip them on these wrong side rows. And what you would get is like that heel flap and gusset where you slip the stitch along each side and that guides you for picking up stitches. You would use that exactly the same. Instead of that, we're doing a garter edge. That's why we're knitting these stitches on the wrong side rows. It'll give us little garter bumps along that heel edge, and that's what we'll use to pick up. But if you prefer it, you can slip the stitches instead, and you'll have a slip stitch edge to pick up your stitches. It's sort of up to you, whatever you prefer to do. But I just wanted to demonstrate a garter stitch edge just for something different, because slip stitch edges, sometimes they leave gaps because you're, you have one those elongated stitches for every two rows of your heel it's one stitch along the side and that can leave gaps in your heel and a garter stitch edge is a good way to avoid the gaps and you still get these little bumps where those garter stitches are to help you pick up but anyway i know that can be a bit confusing but after you start working the heel you'll see what i mean so that's our wrong side row and our right side rows we are just going to work back across we're going to work decreases we're going to work an ssk at this end and a knit two together at this end. And that is how we're going to get our heel shape. Instead of short rows, we're going to use decreases. So we start with an SSK right here at the very end. And you can see I'm using my second double pointed needle. I'm just leaving the short circular where it is. It's just gonna hold our stitches back there. And then I'm going to knit to the last two stitches. Right now we're just ignoring these two markers. They are just to tell us which stitches we're working. Here I'm coming up on the end right here. I'm gonna to knit to these last two. And of course they're a little loose because of our yarn tail. So I'm gonna hold onto that tail while I knit these last two together. And then later on I can use that tail to close things up. I'm just gonna move it to the inside. 
And what's nice of the contrast heel is we're gonna have a yarn tail at each side. So if we need to, we can use those to close up any gaps we might have, but I don't find I have gaps with this type of a heel. So that is our right side row. We did an SSK, we knit across to the last two stitches and worked a knit two together. I'm gonna to turn my work and I'm gonna work another a wrong side row following the same exact procedure. I'm going to knit the first one and then purl to the last stitch and then knit that one as well. And that'll give me a little garter stitch edge along both sides to pick up stitches later on. And there we go, we're down to our last stitch. So we will knit that stitch and turn the work. You can see those stitches are just hanging out there. Now that we're getting a little bit of distance, it's easier to work back and forth without this getting in the way. And we work another right side row. So we're going to work our SSK, knit to the last two, knit two together. And we're gonna repeat these two rows until we have basically used up all of the stitches on either side. I started with 12. I'm gonna end up with just one stitch on each side of the marker. And the last row I work will be a right side row. So I'll finish by decreasing both sides and I'll have just one stitch remaining on either side of this marker. And we're not gonna do anything to these center stitches. That's sort of the bottom of our heel. That's the center right there, but we're gonna decrease right here. We're gonna maintain that one stitch. Don't know if you can really see it right now, but we do have like a little garter bump right there. And that's what we're gonna use later on after we finish this first half of the heel. When we start working the second half of the heel, we're gonna use those little bumps to pick up stitches and that's how we're going to create the second half of the heel. So you're just gonna continue working those two rows until you finished your last right side row and you'll have one stitch on either side of the marker right here. I'm just about to work my last row you can see I've got two stitches on either side right now. So this last right side row is going to get me down to one stitch on each side. Slip that last marker and knit these two together. And that's my last row. And this is what our heel looks like right now. No short rows, just some decreases. That's this part right here. And now we have to work sort of like um, turning rows basically before we start the next half of our heel. So we're gonna work a wrong side row and then a right side row. And then we can start, that's sort of like this middle point here. And then we'll start working this part, picking up stitches. So we turn our work and we're gonna hold the yarn in front, slip that first stitch in the marker and then just purl to the end of the row. And slip this marker, purl that last stitch. And we're gonna do that on the, this side. We're gonna slip that first stitch with the yarn held to the back. This time, slip the marker, knit to the end of the row. And we're gonna keep these markers here because we're going to be picking up stitches and you want to get back to your original stitch count. Like I had 12 stitches in each section. So I wanna leave the markers here so I'll know when I have those 12 stitches on each side. If I took them out, I'd have to be counting all of their, all 36 stitches on this heel. And it's just easier to keep them there for now. So we have finished the first half of our heel. We finished our two turning rows. Now we can get on to part two where we're going to pick up stitches along this edge. And that's why we have these little garter bumps. That's why we worked garter stitch here because we're going to use those little bumps. If you can see the garter bumps right here. That's what we're gonna to use to pick up our stitches. Now, like I said before, if you wanted to, instead of just knitting one to create that garter stitch edge, you could slip one on your wrong side rows and that would give you that slip stitch edge and you could just pick up in each of those slip stitches. So what we wanna do is pick up the number of stitches we need to get back to our original stitch count. I have one stitch here, I need 11 more stitches. So there should be 11 garter bumps along the edge. If I missed one and I forgot and I just purled across and I don't have a garter bump, like say this one was missing, I can tell that, like, that I should pick up something there because it looks, I mean, everything 
sort of lines up. And if I had missed one, it would be a big empty space and I'd know, okay, I just need to pick up a stitch right there as well. But you need to pick up enough stitches to get back to the original stitch count you had on either side. And to do that, we're just going to do them one at a time as we work this second half. So we're working a wrong side row. We slip the yarn with the front, the yarn is facing us, it's toward the front, we slip that and we're gonna purl across to this last stitch. And then we're gonna pick up our first stitch. Slip that marker, purl this stitch. And now we have to look for our first garter bump, it's right here. And we're going to insert as if to purl. So I look for a place that doesn't look like it's going to give me a hole. So if you're going to purl, you know, you come in from behind with your yarn in the front and you wrap the yarn and pull it through. But I can just try to get the yarn out of the way. The purl, purl side is a bit trickier. So you just want to look at the places where you want to pick up. And if you see there's a hole on either side, I don't want to, I don't want to have a hole in my heel. So I want to use that garter bump itself as my stitch, this bump that's sitting right on the top. Or you can use the bump that's sitting on the inside. But I like to use the one on the top. I just think it's easier to see. So I'm going to insert into that. I'm actually going to move it over to this needle so it looks like a stitch. Now I can insert as if to purl, wrap the yarn, and there we go. There is one stitch picked up. Then we're going to repeat that for this side over here. So we slip with the yarn in the back this time. We're going to knit to the end. Flip that, knit this stitch. And now we come to this side and we look. There's our first garter bump. So, well, I'm just going to slide it down. Now it looks like a stitch on my needle. And I can just knit into it. And there is my second stitch picked up. And you can see we've already got this little sort of cup forming right here. So we're going to turn our work and we're going to repeat that process. We're going to bring the yarn to the front, slip this stitch, purl to the end. And there we go. Bring that yarn to the front. Look for our next garter bump. Now pay attention. Like I see one right here, but that's the one I've already picked up. So I'm going to move down here. And there's one right there. So I pick it up, but then I like to transfer it to this needle. So it feels, it just seems easier. To, and now I know it's like a purl stitch. I'm going to insert and purl that stitch. Now we've got three stitches on this side. So I'm just going to keep going until I've picked up stitches along both sides. And I've got 12 stitches. And that's the last one for this side. I have my 12 stitches back again. Now I turn my work and I work one more right side row to pick up one more stitch on the other side. Slip that stitch knit to the end. And one more purl bump right down here. So pick that up and knit it. And now we are back to our main stitch count. I have 36 stitches, 12 stitches in each section. I'm back to that number of stitches and my heel is complete with no short rows. But we don't wanna break our yarn right now because we already have one tail here. We're gonna work back across these stitches, removing our markers and then breaking our yarn. So we have a tail at each side. So if we end up with any holes when we're weaving in the ends, we can close them up right there. So we're gonna slip this stitch and purl to the end of the row. There, so we've finished our heel. We're done with that needle. I'm gonna break this yarn. We're done with our contrast color. But now we need to get things back on our circular needle. So to do that, we're gonna tuck that tail down in there. We're just gonna slip the stitches back at this point. First off, we need a beginning of round marker. You're gonna need two different markers for this so you know where your beginning of round is, and then we're gonna need another marker to separate our instep from our heel stitches. So I'm gonna use this red one for my beginning of round, and then I'm just going to slip all of these stitches to this needle. And 
Now I'm just slipping them tip to tip purl wise. I'm not changing the stitch mount of the stitches. I just want to get them back onto my main needle again since we're done with our heel. Okay, we're done with those now. Now we can place a second marker just to divide our heel stitches from our instep. And we can resume knitting in the round. We want to get back to our beginning of round marker. Now at this point, if you're concerned about any holes in the corners, we have our yarn tails that we can use to close them up. Or if you wanna pick up a stitch here along each point and then just decrease it on the next round, this is where you would do it. Yep, I don't think, well, it's hard to tell here. We've got the marker there, but if I hold it firmly, it doesn't look that bad. We will see when we come around and I'm just gonna knit across or work across the instep stitches in pattern. And then we can look at the other side as well. So I'm back to my beginning of round. You do wanna make sure you're working around the, this heel turn area very firmly just to make sure if you have some sort of a gap, it's going to be closed up there. Now I'm at the beginning of round, I'm going to go back to just knitting on the heel stitches and then following, maintaining my stitch pattern along the instep. Mm, I do have a bit of a hole there, but I've got my yarn tail, so I can use that to weave in later on. But that's where we're at right now. We are back to working the round. Our heel is finished. So now it's on to working the leg and we have our two markers here. So from the beginning of round marker to this marker, you're just going to knit in stockinette along the bottom of the foot. And then for the top of the foot, you will maintain your rib stitch pattern. So that could either be, depending on the size, a knit one and then purl two, knit two to the end, finishing with another knit one. Or it could be a knit two, purl two, finishing with a knit two. Depends on the size. Those, and just to center the stitch pattern, that is how it worked out. But from this point on, you're just going to continue knitting the length of the foot until you are about two and a half inches less than the total desired length. So get a sock ruler or a regular ruler. Know the foot measurement that you have. And then just continue knitting the foot until you're about two and a half inches shorter than you need for the total sock. And then we'll be working this toe and it's quite a long toe. That's why we're gonna give it a full two and a half inches. I finished knitting the length of the foot and now it's time to move on to the toe. So we can get right to our beginning of round marker. We're gonna remove that for now. Now, there are some sock sizes that are going to have to do one setup round first. I don't have to do that because my sock already has a multiple of eight stitches, but for half the sizes, we need to reduce the stitch count by four. So you will knit like nine stitches and then knit two together and then repeat that three more times around your sock. Or depending, it's, it's the smallest size, it's nine stitches. Other sizes is a few more stitches. But basically you have to get to a multiple of eight to work this toe shaping right here because we're gonna divide our stitches into groupings of eight and decrease one stitch uh, every certain number of rounds to get this sort of long toe shaping. So just check your pattern, see if you have to do that setup round or check your math, check your stitch count and divide it by eight to see if you get a whole number. So I have 72 stitches, which is divisible by eight. Um, that means I'm going to divide my sock into nine sections. Every sock size is going to be divided into a different number of sections depending on how many stitches you have. So if you have to work that setup round, you're gonna work that right now just to get rid of four stitches and then we're going to work our toe. Since I'm gonna be working mine in a contrast color, I'm just gonna break this yarn and I'm finished with this yarn now. And I can attach my contrast color. Now, once your stitch count is the eight, an L multiple of eight, then, then we have a second setup round to do. We're going to take all of our stitches and get them moved over to double pointed needles because we have to work our toe in a different format. If you've ever used circular needles, you know that at a certain point, as you get fewer and fewer stitches, you can't continue to work in the round. And that's the case with these small circulars as well. So we are going to first mark the beginning of round. And these markers aren't, don't really mean anything for you. They're, these were just there for me to keep track of how many rows I had done or rounds to make sure that my second sock was the same as my first. So you can just completely ignore those. So I'm putting a marker right there so I know that this is my beginning of round. Now for this first round, we're just going to do a setup. We're gonna 
place some markers and transfer all of these stitches to our double pointed needles. Now the number of markers that you're going to need is also dependent on your multiple. I have um, a multiple, well a multiple of eight, but I, I have nine sections. So I have to have enough markers to divide up those sections, but I'm also using double pointed needles so I can use the end of the needle as a marker as well. So if you're using Magic Loop, you might need more markers or less markers depending on the size of the sock and how many sections you have to knit. So what we're gonna do is divide our sock up into sections of eight stitches each. And all the sizes are exactly the same. You're going to knit eight and then place a marker. And then repeat that again until you've done that for all of the stitches. Okay, so this is all I'm going to put on this first needle. Now I can't really place a marker here to mark the end of this section because it's just gonna fall off unless I put a locking one there. I'm not gonna bother, but I know that this is the end of another grouping of eight. And then I'm going to move on to my second needle. And you can see here is that instep marker. We're just gonna remove that. We have no need to keep that anymore. We're not gonna be working in the rib pattern anymore. We're gonna to switch to stockinette on the top of the foot as well. That's my next group of eight. And this instep marker is halfway between another grouping of eight, so I'll just take that one out. And knit four more. And there we go, that's my second marker with three more sections. Now, depending on your stitch count, you'll have a different number of sections. You're just gonna try to divide them evenly between three different double-pointed needles. So I'm gonna continue, that was my last multiple of eight there, now I'm gonna do another few sections on this needle and we've transferred all of our stitches so now we can work our toe we are done with our circular needle and you can see all of my stitches have been divided up into sections of eight now we're going to work our first decrease round and what we're going to do same for every single size you're going to knit across these stitches, two stitches before the marker, and knit two together. And then just repeat that all the way around. Slip that marker, knit to two stitches before this marker, knit two together. And knit, two, knit to two stitches before the end of the DPN, and if we'd had a marker, we would have placed it here, knit two together. And then move on to the next needle, and repeat this all the way around. So you're going to reduce one stitch for every grouping of eight that you have. So in my case, I'm going to be decreasing nine stitches. Every size is going to be decreasing a different amount of stitches, but depending on how many groups of eight you have. So let's go ahead and work that decrease. All right, so we're just going to knit to two stitches before our first marker, or basically we're knitting six at this point. You're knitting six stitches and then a knit two together. Knit these two together. Slip your marker and just repeat that with every group of eight that you have. So knit six or knit to two stitches before the marker. Knit two together. And then the last one on this needle, I do the same thing. I knit to the last two stitches, pretending there is a marker here and I knit these two together. So if it helps, you can place markers. I just, I know it's the end of the needle and I have to repeat that step. 
so I don't really use a marker there. And then you're just going to repeat that for the next double pointed needle. Knit two together and then back to my beginning of round marker. So that's the end of that decrease round. You can tuck those tails in for now. All right, and now we are going to knit six rounds. Now, if you noticed when we were working that decrease round, we, I said knit two, two stitches over the marker, knit two together. What we actually had there were six stitches. So that's what we use as our, basically the number of rounds that we're going to knit now. We're not gonna decrease for six more rounds. We're going to just knit six rounds plain and then we'll work another decrease round. So for this round, you're just going to knit all the way around and then you're gonna repeat that until you have completed six rounds total. I finished my six knit rounds and if you can tell by looking at the sock, like obviously we have a different color here. So we know we worked a setup round. We can see right there, that's where that knit two together is. We have two stitches that were joined together. This is the row that that knit two together was worked on, the row above where those stitches are joined. So there's our decrease round. And now we can count six from that. One, two, three, four, five, and then number six is on my needle. So that's how you can count your stitches. Look for that decrease, then look for the stitch above. That's the round that you worked it on and then count the stitches above, including the stitch on your needle. And then you'll know you've completed six decrease rounds or six plain rounds between your decrease round. Now we're going to repeat that decrease round. We're going to knit to the marker or two stitches before the marker and then knit two together. But you'll notice this time we are knitting five stitches basically and then two stitches before the marker we knit two together and you're going to repeat that all the way around until you have worked your second decrease round slip that marker i'm going to knit to two stitches which in the case for this round is we're knitting five there are five stitches here and now i'm going to decrease again so just do this decrease round again and then we're going to work another set of plain rounds. Okay, so that's the last of the decreases for this round. And now it's time to work a number of plain rounds. And this time we're going to work five plain rounds. Uh, you're probably seeing the pattern here. With our first section, we knit six and then decreased and then worked six rounds. This time we knit five and then decreased. So now we're going to work five plain rounds. So go ahead and work those rounds and we know right by looking here, there's our decrease. There's the, the row that we decreased on. We're about to knit that. So this will be our first plain round between the decrease rounds. So go ahead and knit your five rounds and then we'll come back and look at what is next. Finish my five rounds and we can check that here. There is that decrease. Those two stitches were joined together. This is the round that those decreases were worked on. And then we have five rounds after that one two, three, four, and then number five is on our needle. So now it's time for the next decrease round. And I guess you can probably imagine what we're going to do. We're gonna decrease and then we are going to knit four rounds because our decrease rounds relate to those number of rounds. We're knitting four stitches and then working our decrease, which is those two stitches before the marker. So we're knitting to the marker or two stitches before the marker, or we're knitting four stitches and then knitting those. So I think you can probably see the pattern at this point that after you work this decrease round, you're going to knit four plain rounds. Then you're going to repeat this decrease round again and then knit three plain rounds. And then you'll knit two rounds and then we're going to remove our markers and finish things off. So hopefully by now you understand the pattern that's going on here. If not, you can look right at the pattern. It explains it exactly how you're going to work this. So we're working another decrease round. Then we're going to knit four rounds and then we'll work another decrease round and knit three rounds. And you'll see all of that spelled out in the pattern. So I'm going to work those next few rounds and decrease rounds until we have just a few stitches remaining and then I'll come back and show you what we're going to be doing there. So you just keep knitting the rounds on this sock. 
according to the pattern. And this is also where you can adjust the toe. If you find that this toe, you think it's too long, you can remove some of these decrease rounds. You don't, or some of these plain rounds in between your decrease rounds. You don't have to work all of these rounds. You can remove some. You can make a very short toe by just working two plain rounds between every single decrease round. That makes a very, very short toe, but you can vary the number depending on how long the toe is that you want. But this is the standard way to do it. And this toe works out to be about two and a half inches. So I just finished my decrease round. So I'm just going to knit four plain rounds. And then I'm gonna repeat this. I'm gonna do another decrease round and then knit three plain rounds. And then I'll meet you back here after I finish those. You can see I just have a few stitches left here. I worked my knit four rounds, then I worked a decrease round and then knit three rounds. I worked a decrease round and I knit two rounds. Now I'm going to work another decrease round and I'm just gonna remove these markers. We don't need them anymore. So at this point we are knitting one and knitting our two stitches together. We have removed a lot of stitches, so you can just remove your markers at this point. So you are decreasing here, just knitting one stitch and then working our knit two together. All right, we've removed all our markers. We're not gonna knit any more plain rounds. We're just going to work one final decrease round. And then we can close up our stitches. No kitchen or graft or anything like that. We're just gonna knit two together all the way around. So basically whatever stitch number you have, you're just gonna reduce it by half. So just knit two together, all of these stitches all the way around. So each size, each sock size is going to have a different number of stitches remaining depending on how many multiples of eight you had in your specific sock size. So for my example, I had 72 stitches. That worked out to be nine groupings of eight stitches. So I'm going to have nine stitches left. And there we go. So once you're down to your final few, you can break the yarn. You wanna leave a bit of a tail so you can weave it in. So you're gonna thread this tail onto a needle. Then you're just going to work around the stitches, sliding the tail into those live loops. Sort of like you would for the top of a hat. Just working around the circle. And there, you can close it up, tighten it up. I like to put it on my hand so I can see what's going on here. Tighten up that circle. And then I like to go through the stitches again to make sure it's nice and secure. And then you can just draw this tail right through to the center. And then all that's left to do is to remove the markers and weave in your ends. And that is a round toe. You finished your first sock. Now it's time to cast on and knit the second sock. And while you're settling in to knit that sock, settle in and watch some more videos with me. I've created a playlist filled with some knitting and chat episodes about all the things you need to know about knitting socks, proper care for those finished socks, mistakes you should avoid, and a lot more. So click right through that, to that playlist, settle in with your next sock, and let's chat about knitting socks.